Welcome to Chandwell. My name's Michael, and I'm building this shabby street at the front of my N-scale model of a rundown Yorkshire town, set in 1993. The bottom part of Station Road is complete, and it's embedded in the layout with a dilapidated pavement up the front, and a grimy back street and yards round the back. In this short video, I'm going to show how I went about constructing the ground around the street, and hopefully making it look like it's a solid part of the town that's been here for years. Because the ground is higher than the baseboard, I could make a small stack of card to represent the steps that lead to a cellar door. This can then just glue onto the back of the building with a bit of PVA. With that in place, it's time to take a last look at the street before it's glued down. I am really pleased with how this has turned out. I think I've achieved the higgledy-piggledy look of a street that has grown and changed over more than a century, and I think I've managed to get something with quite a bit of character. I used Uhu glue to give me a quick bond when attaching the street to the baseboard. With the base covered in this horrible substance, I carefully dropped the street onto the baseboard. Now it was time to make the pavement. Now if Station Road was flat, it would have made sense to make the buildings such that they drop straight on top of the pavement, then I wouldn't have had to be worried about anything. But Station Road, it's not only on a hill, that hill is also curved, so if I was going to do that it would have been almost impossible to cut the bottoms of the buildings properly so that it just drops on top. I had no option other than to place the building onto the baseboard and then make the pavement so it pushed up against the front of the buildings. Now, it's also not a flat front, there are bay windows, there's all kinds of things, it's definitely not straight, so I needed to find a way of easily making the pavement so it fit just right. Using the same template that I used for the double yellow lines over a year ago, I printed the rough shape onto copier paper and cut it out. This is a good start and it shows that I have the overall shape correct, but now I have to fill in all these gaping holes. I chopped some scrap paper into little pieces, and then I used dabs of PVA glue to carefully and slowly push the pieces up against the street. By tearing the pieces into the right shape, gradually overlapping them all, and taking care to fill in all the gaps, I ended up with a pile of paper that represented the pavement. After looking at the bare baseboard for four years, this was a very exciting moment, as the end really was in sight. The paper easily peeled away from the street, leaving me with the exact shape I needed to make the pavement. I drew around this onto some half millimetre card, which when cut out dropped into place on the layout almost perfectly. I went a bit wrong here, and I needed to do a bit of fettling here. So another layer of adjusted half millimetre card on top gave me a one millimetre thick pavement, which fit the profile of the street really well. Maybe a bit more fettling on this corner, I think. That's not bad. I used the free software Inkscape to design an old, worn-out tarmac pavement, complete with street ironwork and a cellar door for the railway. I was taken by this random patch of blockwork in Shipley, so I used a texture from Architectures to add a representation of that in Chandwell. Once printed, I cut it out, covered the card in PVA, and then placed it onto the texture. I wrapped the kerbs around the front of the pavement, and I used my scribing tool to help get me a tight, clean fold. I trimmed away the excess, and then smeared Uhu on the base surface, and pushed the pavement into place. So, can you spot the obvious mistake here? We'll come back to that. I used a ruler to measure the dimensions of the big hole at the back. I dropped in some 2mm thick supports into place and then I used the same technique as with the pavement to get a shape ready to fill the hole. I covered this in scale scenes cobblestone texture, and then added some patchy tarmac on top. I thought it would be a good idea to wrap the cobbles around the edge and include a 1mm tall kerb. I don't know why I did that, once I dropped it onto the layout it looked awful. It was so awful in fact, that I hacked at it with my scalpel and my files and I didn't even remember to record any of it. So let's get back and look at the aftermath. So I ended up with a complete mess, I even damaged the road surface that was already in place. Thankfully a bit of watercolour paint soon sorted that out. I even managed to colour match against the scale scene's print, and I think what I've ended up with is actually quite good. I still need to populate the yard with some rubbish, maybe some cars, some people, whatever, but that's a job for another day. So did you spot the mistake on this corner? 
I printed that pink block work at double O scale instead of N, so I actually made it twice as big as it should have been. A quick reprint and a patch dropped nicely on top. With some of the gaps covered with a bit of greenery, steps added where needed, and a generous coat of varnish, I'm incredibly pleased by how well this street is bedded into the overall model. We are 18 episodes into the making of Station Road now, and there are many, many more to come. I'll be starting on the top part next, and my channel members have already seen the drawings and know where I'm taking it. If you'd be interested in behind the scenes pictures and videos to see where I'm going with Chandwell, then this silver button is what you need. Do consider joining my channel as a member. Regardless of that though, join me next week where we look at the top of Station Road, and I'm looking forward to showing you that. So until then then, thank you for watching, take care, and I'll see you next time. <laughs>